All right, so in this video, we're going to look at how to identify an expression as a polynomial and what its highest degree is. So a polynomial is an expression that contains coefficients multiplying powers of x or whatever other variable. And uh, while this notation kind of looks intimidating, basically all the a's are coefficients that correspond to this particular degree that they're attached to. And uh, the x, the variable itself, is just raised to an integer power. So whatever this highest power is, the next term is one less and so on until you get down to x to the one. And then the last term, the constant, has no x on it. Uh, it's equivalent to x to the zero, x to the zero, any number to the zero is one. So this is the general uh, form of a polynomial. Um, but we can look at some specific examples to see that fit this expression. So any constant standing by itself is um, a polynomial. Technically, it meets this definition. It only has the last term in it, but this does meet the definition of a polynomial in general. Um, a linear expression here, like 2x plus 1, this is also a polynomial. The highest term, the highest degree is 1 instead of 0. Um, but it's understood to be one, and so it's not written next to the x. When you get to higher powers than that, then they start actually getting written. So here uh, we have a quadratic, it's the, called the degree two polynomial, because the highest degree in the expression, the highest power of x is two. Now, in, in the one variable polynomial, then you just have to look at the largest power in the entire expression, and that will tell you the degree of the polynomial. Now, when there's more than one uh, variable, then that doesn't quite apply anymore. You have to uh, you have to take into account all of the variables, not just the one. But when there's only one uh, variable in the problem, then you just figure out which uh, variable has the highest degree, and you call that the the degree of the entire expression. Um, now, for polynomials, all of these powers do need to be whole numbers, uh, and specifically, they need to be positive whole numbers. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, et cetera, those are all fine. But you can't have fractions, and you can't have negative exponents. All right, so let's look at what happens when there are more than one variable in the expression. In order to determine the degree of the polynomial or the degree of the term, then uh, you need to add the exponents of any variables that are present. So in this case, there is an x to the fourth and a y to the sixth. So there is a tendency sometimes for students that are new to this to say, oh, this is a degree six. No, it's these are not separate terms. And so they're because they're being multiplied together, we actually have six copies of one variable and four copies of the other in the same term. And so we have to add those powers together in order to get the full power, the full degree of this term. And so 4 plus 6 is 10. The constant doesn't do anything, but the combination of multiplying two variables does increase the degree. Now, if you have multiple expressions, uh, multiple terms in your polynomial, then similar to the one degree, one variable case, the highest degree term in the expression determines the degree of the entire polynomial. But you do have to find the degree of each term first by adding the, po the powers of those exponents together. So in our first term here, we have an x squared and y to the fifth. So the degree of that term is seven. The second term has one copy of x and uh, seven copies of y. So one plus seven is eight. You can't ignore the fact that this x is to the one power. The one is understood, so it's not written, but it's still there. And then the final term, um, x cubed times y squared, this is, we have, add the exponents, three plus two is five. So the highest degree term is the middle term, it's degree eight. And so the degree of the whole polynomial is degree eight. Now, if you have a constant by itself, 
that is considered a polynomial of degree zero, as long as that constant is not um, zero itself. If the constant is in fact zero, we would then say that the zero has no degree. Um, now this is a little tricky and it doesn't come up in problems very often, but that is technically how they are classified. All constants except zero are classified as degree zero polynomials and except zero itself, which is classified as no degree. All right, so let's look at some comparisons. Um, three is a polynomial, but if you divide by your x, that is not a polynomial. So one over x is not a polynomial. Three x minus two, this is a polynomial of degree one. It's a linear expression. Dividing by that linear expression is not a polynomial. Um, you can multiply by two variables, x times y squared and three times xy, but you can't divide the two variables by each other. That's not allowed. Um, you can have a polynomial that has lots of different terms in it. Um, that's a polynomial that meets our definition, even though it doesn't go all the way down to the constant. But you can't put an absolute value around it because then that's, even if inside the absolute value is a polynomial, once you put the absolute values on it, it's not a polynomial. Um, you can have polynomials that have multiple variables, but only in separate terms. That's still a polynomial. You can't put a square root or any other kind of root, cube root or anything like that around it. That's not a polynomial anymore. Um, and in this case, again, we're kind of skipping around. You could have a power as large as you want, as long as it's a positive whole number. That would be a degree two polynomial. That's perfectly fine. But you can't have any decimals or fractions in your exponents. That's not a polynomial anymore. Now, there are some particular terms to kind of keep in mind as we talk through the terms associated with polynomials. A monomial is a polynomial that has only one term in it. So an example would be like the three or just an X by itself. A binomial is a polynomial with only two terms. So an example of this would be like three X minus two or six X to the fourth plus two X or X Y squared minus three X Y. The terms are determined by the plus and minus signs. So that's only two terms in all three of these cases. So those are binomials. Trinomials have exactly three terms. So these last two examples, x squared plus y squared plus four, or one minus three, 13x plus x to the 22, those are both trinomials. They're just terms that have three terms in them. Now, there are technical terms for um, expressions that have larger numbers of terms and then like four terms or five terms or whatever. But generally, in most cases, we just refer to them as polynomials. They have many terms. 